Hi there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know I am. Today I'm going to be talking about a subject that has been at the forefront of my mind for quite some time. And it's something that I tend to put a lot of practice in and I certainly have done over the past few weeks to try and improve upon. Um, and basically it's to do with the index finger. Um, something that really gets on my nerves is when I end up playing the same kind of things over and over again. And a lot of the time, I'm not saying it's all of the time, but a lot of the time it's to do with the index finger wanting to stay in the same position. And I think this comes from doing the pentatonic scale uh, and the index finger just literally staying on the same fret. So we end up just playing the same licks, the same lines over and over and over again because the index finger doesn't really want to move from this comfortable position that it finds itself in. Um, so, as a consequence, what I've done is come up with some patterns to help me alleviate that problem um, and work on moving the index finger to um, enable me to come up with some less predictable lines and licks. Uh, but it's quite challenging at first because the index finger really, really does struggle, if, especially if you're not used to it, if you haven't done this kind of thing. Um, it will really be quite uncooperative at first, but stick with it and um, you will start to see some results. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you some top secret tips. Uh, well, they're not top secret. God, I sound like a snake oil salesman there, um, sort of selling you a thousand bucks for some top secret guitar tips. Uh, I, I'm not into any of that stuff. Um, I'm just going to show you some of the patterns that I use that have enabled me to sort of build on that um, index finger weakness, as it were. Uh, so why don't we get to it? I'm going to go through various different examples, and these are quite challenging. Uh, but let me preface this by saying this is not about speed or anything else. It's to do with control. So the slower you play these examples, the better. Okay, right. Let's get straight to it. Let's take a look at example one. Okay, example one, we're just going to take a pentatonic scale, okay, E minor pentatonic, but we're not going to play that here. We're going to take, uh, we're going to start here at fret three, and we're going to take this motif, okay, and we're going to be using that in the majority of these sequences that I show you. So what we're going to do is... And then descend... Okay, that's the pattern. So uh, let me show you nice and slowly. So we have five, seven, three. And then we're going to shift positions. Uh, sorry, beg your pardon. It's three, seven, five. Ignore me. Three, seven, five. And what we're going to do when we pull off here, you'll notice I'm pre preparing the index finger to move into position for the next string. See? Shift. Uh, the, the other thing as well is you can pick the first note when we change strings if you want, but I find I get much better results by hammering it on from nowhere. Like so. Hammer. 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 It seems to sort of really help me sort of solidify the movement with the index finger from here to here to here to here to here to here. So there's a lot of movement there with the index finger, and uh, by hammering it on from nowhere, it really, like I say, it really allows me to solidify that. So let's just go over that again. If you want to pick that first note, that's fine, but we'd, we've got to concentrate on playing this slowly and controlled. So this is picked, the first note, and then reverse it. Okay, so that is the first pattern. Let's move on to pattern number two now. Okay, so let's take a look at example number two now. We're going to start all the way up here at fret 19. Okay, and it's this. So that's the sequence we're going to use. So same as this one here, but in this position, starting at fret 19. If you've only got 22 frets, start on the following position, okay? Thank you. 
Oops. Okay, so when we do that pattern, especially when we descend, as soon as we pull off to this, we need to be moving the index finger position ready to do the next shape. So we're a step ahead of the game every position that we play. We have to watch out for some of these stretches. That one especially. But work on it nice and slowly. That, that's the main thing I want you to take away from this. These are exercises not for speed, but control, okay? And then we hammer on. Okay, good, let's move on. Okay, now we're on to the third example here. Um, so we're gonna take the E minor pentatonic and we're gonna do, do this pattern. Okay, and then we'll just move it across pairs of strings. Following. Okay, once more. And again, it's really making sure that you're playing it nice and slowly so that um, as you're doing the movements, as you're doing especially the hammering on and pulling off, that gives you time to move your index finger to where you need to move it. So, so whoops, bollocks, <laughs> my favorite phrase of late. Okay, to start with, if you're finding this very difficult, just do the one pattern, okay? And then you can move on from there. Okay, let's move on to the final example now. Okay, we're on to the final example and this is probably the most challenging of them all. And again, let me reiterate that you need to be doing this really slowly to control the movements. Okay, so our pattern is, okay, and then we're just gonna move it onto the adjacent strings, the appropriate strings. So. Okay, we're on to the final pattern, and this one's a real, real challenge, so make sure you do it nice and slowly and concentrate on moving the fingers to the appropriate position, okay? So, this is our um, initial pattern. Pretty nasty. And then we move on to... Then... Notice I'm using fingers one and two here, because we're gonna need the others for the next position. So same again, three, four, pull off to one, and then hammer on to two. So it's three, four, one, two, and it follows that all the way. Okay. Watch out for that one. Okay, so just to summarize here, um, these exercises really take a lot of control to pull off. And uh, you know, some of the stretches are pretty demanding. So you don't wanna do anything stupid. Make sure you take your time with it and really work on the control of the movement um, so that you get it right. Um, so try not, it's not necessarily about stretching either. It's about moving uh, sort of sensibly. Um, you don't need to stay in the one position to get the stretch. You can do move, take your position and move. Uh, so there's lots of different ways of doing it and it's important to sort of um, keep your sensible head on. Um, you know, make sure you're doing intelligent practice. That's the thing that's gonna get the most, uh, the best results I find. Okay, so do these nice and slowly and really work on the position shifts. That's the whole goal 
with these exercises. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope it's given you some things to think about, some things to practice, and uh, some things to kind of get you away from doing the same old stuff, you know, the, the uh, pentatonic box, box patterns every single time. So this will hopefully give you some ideas to break out of that rut. Okay, just to finish up, still 50% on my website for all downloads. I leave the link in the description box below the best way to support me so make sure you check that out anyway hope you've enjoyed this video i will see you in the next one thanks a lot guys cheers